Well, isn't this a surprise? Now, I know I said I wasn't going to review anything again until early June, but I told myself that if the Van den Rijk returned during this time, I would make definitely just make an exception. And, what well, they, they returned the very next week. So, oh my god, amazing chapter. My excitement for their return is literally over 9,000 right now. I cannot... I'm so happy to see them. But that, the, the chapter is just brilliant. Okay, it's everything but the rain... Opus 10, Prince von Licht, um, and I'll get to the meaning of that later, but basically it starts off obviously where it left off with, um, we get this cool redrawn image of Masaki's death, um, and Ishin starts by saying she wasn't supposed to die that day, which is kind of weird because, um, you know, he, he makes it sound like before this revelation she was supposed to die that day, so that, that was kind of strange, um, but, he, but he says that you know, all Quincy had this ability called Blute, and Masaki's was exceptionally powerful, even after she was a bit by the hollow. She still had this Blute. And um, Ichigo quite rightly wonders how on earth Grand Fisher was actually able to kill her then, since, you know, she should have been able to defeat him. And you get this really cool little um, uh, couple of panels of Grand Fisher jumping at Masaki, which, you know, you obviously didn't see before. Um, which shows us that it's still Grand Fisher who killed Masaki, but there's a reason as to why she died. Al's Valen. Oh my god. So cool. Oh, man. Juha Bark, or Yahweh, as I think is actually pronounced, is there's this awesome picture of him sort of standing there, and he's, like, got his arms out, and his fingers are, like, glowing. Basically, Ausvalen means something like holy selection. And according to Ishini, basically, Yahweh um, selected impure Quincy's. Quincy's he deemed impure and stole their power from him. Obviously, this shocks Ichigo. And actually, what's also quite interesting is Ishin says that it's not that he couldn't save her, but he didn't save her, and that you get like this reaction shot of Ichigo. And you kind of wonder what he's thinking at that point. Is he thinking, like, why the hell didn't you save Mum? Um, and then Ishin, Ishin basically says that even though he, even though he could still feel Reiatsu, because the Shinigami powers had already been suppressed, not lost, he could feel Masaki and Grand Fisher's Reiatsu, and had he known she'd have been at a disadvantage, he would have gone after her. Sorry, my phone just went off. But he didn't know that. So, um... Yeah, so Ishin couldn't do anything. So basically what happened is, not, it took 900 years for Yahweh to recover his heartbeat. 90 years for him to recover his reason, and 9 years for him to recover his power. So what I think this means is, that's 999. 1,000 year blood war arc. 999 years ago, Yahweh was sealed. He's, he's known in the Quincy law as the sealed king. This is so cool. Basically, Yahweh is this legend who was sealed a thousand years ago. That, that's awesome. He's like this typical uber-ancient villain with masses of power. And I presume it was, he was sealed by Yamamoto or sealed by Shinigami who couldn't kill him. Um, and it took him 900 years for his heart to start beating again. Another 90 years for him to start being able to think. And then in the last nine years, he stole the powers of the impure Shini, uh, Quincy to give his own powers back. He's an absolute monster, absolute beast, and a great, great villain. And Ishin also reveals what we all knew, that Uryu's mum is Katagiri Kane, and she, uh, her powers were taken by Yahweh, and then three months later she died, because she was already weak, and the stealing of her powers just killed her, basically. And also, Yahweh stole Masaki's powers, and so she lost to Grand Fisher. Now, this basically means that Yahweh is responsible indirectly for the death of Uryu's mum and Ichigo's mum. Not only this, he's also killed Yamamoto, so he's devastated Seirete, and he's just an awesome villain. Oh my god, Kubo. Kubo, you're doing this right, man. You're doing it right. Um, so I'm officially loving Yahweh. The dude's unbelievably cool. And then, so basically, Ishin tells Ichigo, Ichigo kind of flips out. He's like, how can this guy do this? Who is this guy? Is it just because he's king? And, um, so, basically, Ishin says that the Quincy started with Yahweh. That's so cool. I can't get over it. I mean, you, you possibly can tell I'm excited about this. I freaking love these guys. Um, just the Quincy are so awesome in general. And, so, basically, Yahweh is the very first Quincy. He is the Quincy god, pretty much. Um, I love this notion that he's this myth, this sealed king legend. And there's also the fact that, um, his blood runs in everyone's veins. So when he calls them my son, he is not technically literal, but 
it kind of is. Um, he is like the granddaddy of all Quincy, which is interesting because he kind of killed Royd Lloyd, and you'd think like, well, maybe he'd show a little bit more compassion, but he's clearly just a nutter. But anyway, Ichigo, you know, he's finally happy to know who he is, and he's like, thank you, Dad. And you get this freaking awesome picture of him just like staring at the screen. He's like, thank you. Um, so they head on out. I'm not entirely sure where they're going, but um, Ikumi's outside and she gives Ichigo his badge. This is a bit weird because Ichigo says, thanks, Ikumi, thanks, Dad. Now, if Ikumi can't see uh, Ishin, she's going to be like, uh, what? Um, so yeah, that's kind of weird. But I, I kind of think that because she can see the badge, she can see Ishin. I was kind of expecting someone to make a comment about that, but no, not really. Then Ichigo says, I'm heading out. Where's he going? I have no idea. Back to the Soul Society, I suppose. What's he going to do? Absolutely no clue. Um, and that's why this is exciting. It's unpredictable. I don't know where Ichigo's going. What's he going to do? Then, we go to the Ice Palace. Oh my god, I wasn't expecting this. I'm so happy. Hashvold walks out of the darkness, and um, Yahweh's sitting in his throne, and he's like, have you got the subject, Hashwolf? And the dude's like, yeah, he's this way. And then Yahweh's like, Glad you could make it. And at this point, I was like, it's going to be Uryu. It's definitely going to be Uryu. Turn the page. Whoa! Oh my god, it's Uryu. But look what he's wearing. Holy... He's never looked this cool. I mean, the Van der Reich have style. Oh man. They have style. Uryu looks freaking awesome. And he's like carrying a Sturmitter cloak in his arm as well. But he looks so cool. He looks like... He looks a bit different though to the others. He's got like a fancy belt. He's got like a bunch of medals. Um, and Bark says, join your brothers in arms, Prince von Licht, which basically means Prince of Light. And that's where the chapter ends, unfortunately. So, well, 10 out of 10, no real question about it, definitely a 10 out of 10. Um, 10 out of 10 on the return of the Vandenreich alone, plus all the rest, rest of the amazing stuff that happened. Good God, this is an awesome chapter. Um, I can't think of anything bad to say about it. So we know the truth behind Masaki's death, but it's opened up so many doors. Yahweh is now this personal villain to which you go. Oh, man, it's so good. And also, Uryu, I presume Uryu doesn't know that Yahweh killed Katagiri. Um, if he does, then this is possibly an infiltration kind of thing, like an inside job, but I'm not really sure. Um, my wardrobe's open. You have a nice view of my shirts. Um, inside job... A lot of people have said brainwashing due to what Yahweh says about re-education. Uh, I'm not too sure. Uryu... I just kind of think that if he was brainwashed, Yahweh wouldn't say, like, so will you fight with us or something like that. I don't know. I, don't, I just don't think he... I don't, I'd rather he wasn't brainwashed. But this is definitely leading to some serious Ichigo versus Uryu showdown. It's got to happen. Um, uh, okay, if I was disappointed about one thing, I kind of hoped we might see some of the Stern Ritter... As not, namely. But, um, no, we didn't. So, you know, what a shame. But maybe they'll be in the next chapter. At least they're back, so they have the capacity to be in the next chapter. Um, just an amazing, amazing... Oh, man. Anyway. Anyway, since I haven't done a couple... Uh, I'm re reviewing a few chapters, I'm not... I can't really read out people's comments. So drop your theories down below. Is there you brainwashed, or is he doing this on purpose? If he's doing it on purpose, why is he doing it on purpose? And, you know... Wow, just awesome chapter. Why is he doing it? What do you think of Yahweh? What do you think of this bit of backstory we got on him about him being the sealed king, the Quincy forerunner father, basically? What do you think of all that? What do you think of Masaki's true death? How do you think it fits? Do you like it? Let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to... I'll try and review next week. I'm just going to try and get back into it. Um, I just had a big project hand in. But you know you can always talk to me about Bleach on my Facebook page, which I'll put the link in the description below. Um, but yeah, I'll get back to doing the comments and stuff next week. I'll definitely try and do that. Um, unfortunately I don't really have time to do the drawings and stuff but as long as we can get discussion going that's the main thing so Prince von Licht probably the last Everything But The Rain chapter 10 out of 10 amazing so glad to see the return of the Van der Reich um, did you like this chapter let me know in the comments below and I will read out some comments next week apart from that oh well, yeah actually and I'm, I think I'm going to do some kind of like a panel of the week thing so what do I think my favourite panel was it's kind of impossible to contest really it's Uryu looking like a complete badass a Nazi but a badass nonetheless I have to say though um, 
there's definitely a contender, and that's the picture, in my opinion, of Ryuken looking out the hospital window at the moon, kind of covered with, kind of covered with the clouds. And then you've got the picture of Katagiri behind him. Fantastic picture. So much emotion in that. What was your favourite picture? Everyone, most people are going to say Ryu. Or the Ichigo face. The Ichigo face was really good. But for me, the winner is definitely Ryu. So that's it for this week, guys. 10 out of 10. Let me know in the comments below what you thought, and I shall catch you next time. Until then, see you later.